we are back. A new week here on the Blue Room YouTube channel and podcast. Hope everybody had a good weekend. As ready for a new week and um, the latest brew of Bloom. I'd like to say I am joined by author and the creator of the EvertonResults.com website, uh, Steve Johnson. Steve, thanks very much for, for coming on. It's great to be well, It's great to finally meet, albeit in these weird circumstances. I know it's strange because you get to know people via different means, Twitter or whatever. And you, don't, <laughs> you don't really know what anyone looks like. So, um, no, it's great and honoured to be here. Thinking about all the people you've had on recently, Andy Burnham and Kevin Ratcliffe and all the rest. I'm thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> oh, no, it's absolutely not, not the case at all. Um, we had we had some of our contributors on the first week who, who were no marked. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> got another one now, then. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they won't forgive me for saying that. But no, I, honestly, <laughs> great to have you on. I'm sure we'll, we'll get into um, the book and, and Everton results uh, in, in a bit. But like I asked all the guests on this, how, how are you finding things at the moment? Are you, are you coping pretty well? Yeah, all right. I've grown a lockdown beard. <clears throat> Never had a good. beard before. Good. Except I thought, um, I don't know the rules of beards, I've never had a beard, so I don't really, <laughs> really know what I'm doing. So I bought a beard trimmer and I thought I'd better tidy up before I come and speak to you because I don't know how dashing and handsome you are. Oh well, I'm, a, I'm certainly going to look, Dave Prentice for me all sorts of grief about my hair last week, so. <laughs> well you can't go to barbers, can you? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Although I used a beard trimmer on my head, yeah. and then I, I thought I'd tidy up yesterday and I forgot to put the measuring yard on, so I've got no beard at all now. Oh yeah, I can see. Yeah, <laughs> oh. we all we all learn. We all learn. Yeah. So, so you you're not a beard man usually, no? No, it's only just something to do in lockdown. You know, so. Um, yeah. But it seems, seems to be all right. Looking anyway. good. Looking good, man. Yeah. 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 No one wants I, to I, do that. Keep it maintained is definitely good advice because, like, I let mine grow for ages, and then it took yeah. me about half an hour to, to get rid of the thing the other day when it when it came to get rid of it. So. So keeping it trim and stuff is uh, is definitely the way to go. But aside from the, aside from the beard, have um, you been been up to anything else? Have you discovered any new passions or new hobbies or anything like that? No, well, jigsaws actually. Oh yeah, beards and jigsaws. Yeah, I mean, it's just something to pass the time, isn't it? This is a boring conversation. We're talking about beards and jigsaws. It's absolutely but, um, fine. I love this sort of stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but apart from that, just you know, trying to keep fit and do a bit of exercise. That's not worked that well. Yeah. Um, Trying uh, not to drink too much. That, that. <laughs> yeah, we had one of them this weekend. I put on Twitter myself on on Saturday. Yeah. My missus made amaretto sour cocktails, and they were amazing. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. amazing. But on, on, on jigsaws, um, I don't know if people have seen this actually. Um, um, Grand Old Team have released the yeah. the Everton mishmash they did, which is a brilliant, yeah. a brilliant piece of work, isn't it? As as a jigsaw, yeah. I think that'll be a great one. Well, I got the um, the original poster for my son for one of his birthdays, so he got that, and then I put myself in the uh, queue for the um, jigsaw when that comes out. Yeah. So that'll be uh, that'll be great. It's really funny actually because I live in South Buckinghamshire, and um, I didn't know anything about the guy who actually does it. Uh, yeah. Is it Alex. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. And we have um, uh, like a, a fair once a year here, and we were just wandering around like we do, meeting all the people that we know here, and I thought. I recognise some of those posters over there, and it was him at the yeah. stand, and he lives up, just up the road in a place called Hazelmere, near near to me. Yeah, so we oh. had a good old chat. So that was a coincidence. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the jigsaw. Small world, eh? Small world. Mm. It, it's, it's when you see people doing those jigsaws though, which are just all one colour, oh, and no, they're just like concentric circles, and you, you've got to just find the piece. I, I don't know how people how, go about doing that. That would just kill me. I'd, I'm never going to do that. Yeah. There's Christmas scenes in the pyramids for me. Yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got snowy Christmas towns in ours. We've got a Beatles one somewhere as well of the Abbey Road. <laughs> but, but, yeah, not not, not, not yeah, stuck right. into that. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure we will never down the line. But and yeah. in regards to Everton, you know, as we'll come to talk about, um, you know, your life very much has has been, you know, revolving around the club for a long time. You've wrote a book about the football club. You've you've had the website for a while. How are, we, how are you finding not having just the, the toffees around and about and just in, in your, your day-to-day life? Weird, isn't it? Because my life sort of revolves around the matches and then immediately updating my website afterwards and then preparing for the next match and trying to find some quirky stats. And I send the stats pack to Everton and they use it for some of the stuff. Yeah. Um, I've got a page in the programme now. Yeah. Um, so I prepare for that. Suddenly all that's gone and it's kind of like, oh, what do I do now? So I'm trying to find things just to fill in the time because we'll probably come on to this because I'm a bit obsessive about numbers and stats. Um, so I've just been trying to find things to do. So I thought, what can I do that I haven't done yet? 
I know, what's our record like on every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? What's it like on every month of the year? Oh, wow. And I started doing that, and even I got bored with that after a while. <laughs> it was just relentless numbers that meant nothing. <laughs> so I finished it off, but I haven't bothered doing anything with that because it's just, it's too boring. So, um, but if, you know, if, if fill the gap for me anyway. Now yeah. I'm looking at captains. I'm trying to find out who was the match day captain for every match Everton have played. Rather than just the, the you know the club captain for that season because yeah. he won't obviously won't have played in every game so I'm, I'm doing that so I've got my head stuck in the British newspaper archive at the moment. I bet you do a great Everton quiz, Steve. You must. I bet, I, it, it, you could do an absolute. I mean, I did one on Friday with some of the Blue Room people. And it was a bit of a disaster to be honest, but I reckon yeah. I reckon you do an amazing one. Well, I do one now. Um, you know, Neville Southall's Twitter feed gets taken over every yeah. Saturday by David the Toffee and. Uh, the farm, yeah. Um, so they asked me to do a quiz for them every Saturday, so I've been doing that for about a month now. So, so that's good, that's kept me busy during the week trying to think of something that's difficult, not too difficult, not too yeah. easy, and something that you can do on Twitter rather than just a, a one line answer, you know, that is over in five minutes. So, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing some of that as well, so that's good. Um, so filling the time really and just waiting for. Waiting for the season to start, and I've mixed feelings on that from a stacky point of view because obviously it's Liverpool in the league. I can't, we don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, although it's always going to be known as the Asterix Trophy anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but uh, equally thinking, well, if they void it, I've got to unpick a whole season's worth of stats and go back <laughs> to where we were at the start of this season. So we'll see how that pans out. But yeah, um, yeah we're keeping busy anyway with on the stats from Onto the website then, anyone who's not checked it out, by the way, and just it's it's an unbelievable resource for, for all things Everton, Everton results I, I use it all the time when we're doing Blue Room stuff. You want to know anything about a particular game or a particular season, go go and have a look. It's absolutely brilliant. And you set that up in, in 2006. Mm. And it just just went then when you were talking about the days of the week and the months and, and the captains and all that sort of thing. That to me sounds like a, a door and prospect to do, even with that resource you've already got and you've already yeah. managed to establish. So, what was it like in 2006 when you set the site up and you thought, right, I am going to chronicle effectively every football match this club has, has ever played? It was, well, it was funny because um, if, if you've got the book, you'll have noticed that um, I think I mentioned somewhere in there the fact that I've always had this obsession with stats going back, sporting stats going back to when I was a kid. I used to um, I used to try and get the results of wacky races on the telly when the cars went past the finishing line, trying to write down. Is it going for the second and third? The start of the book you say about the ski jumping, is it at the Olympics? Oh yeah, that was yeah, yeah. that was another. That was um, I was where, where was I? I was living in Sheffield, I think, when um, and it was the the Winter Olympics of downhill skiing. And I was just writing everyone's name down and the times, and you have two legs and two runs in this downhill, and I was doing all this. And my mate Andy came in and said what are you doing? And I thought, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. So, um, but I'd always had just this kind of obsession with the sport and with the football and with the stats. So um, that as time went on, I mean, I collected Everton programmes on my, my dad had before me and my brother as well. Yeah. And I kind of inherited some of those. And then the programmes moved into those grids that you get at the back with all the, you know, the matches. So I started to transpose them into into like A4 pads, I don't, you know, for no particular reason, yeah. just from my own ones. And then this kind of went on for years, all this strange behaviour. And then, um, you know, the, well, not the internet, but electronic devices appeared and then Excel appeared. Uh, and I thought, oh, I could just transfer all that into Excel and I can, we can make it easier for me to search things. I don't know what I was searching for. Um, <laughs> And so I did all of that, and I, I just found it really interesting, and I thought, other people must be interested in this as well. So by that time, I put together practically every match with some of the um, incidents in the match, half-time scores, attendances, and you know, sendings off, and things like that. Um, and when the internet appeared subsequently, I thought, other people might be interested in this. So I had to teach myself how to do um, HTML, how to set up a website, and I did that, and started transposing all of these um, Excel figures into um, into the website, and I, I mean, I, there was no in, no no intent to it other than just I, I kind of like like doing it, mm. and I thought people might like it, and um, launched it in 
yeah, you know, 2006, as yeah. you said, that's, yeah. And um, it just, you know, went from there. It just got really popular. I contacted a few people um, who were Everton um, names, the Echo and people like that. Um, and they all publicised it and it just went from strength to strength after that. And then I started adding more sections and correcting things and the rest is history. Yeah, I suppose it, in that sense, it, it must be ever evolving, is it, in that regard? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure, not just in regards to adding the, the current games and what's going on at the moment, I, I imagine you must find things out about games in the past that maybe you've got a tweak here and there as well. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's never, it's not correct. You know, nothing like that can ever be 100% correct. Yeah. There's always things... I find out that, oh shit, it wasn't him who scored, oh, language. It's fine, um, it's fine. <laughs> or, you know, um, just things that need tweaking. So that that's gone, that's tailing off, obviously, as time goes by, because it's getting more and more towards 100% accuracy. Um, and that changes when, um, when I did the book, I needed to make sure that things are as accurate as possible. The book went into a second edition, so that had more um, amendments as I did more research. And so the, the website gets amended too. And um, like, it, like I say, gets additional sections added when I think of something interesting that other people might be interested in too, yeah. except the days yeah. of the week and months of the year. I, I'd, I'd love to know that. I mean, <laughs> from, from what you've done so far, what day of the week are Everton best on? Oh, I don't know. I, I gave up about four weeks ago and I thought, I just can't cope with it. It's just reams <laughs> of stuff. It just meant nothing, you know. I'll, yeah. I'll try and rehash it and see if I can put it in some sort of interesting form. Yeah. So you can look forward to that one. But it's it's it, when you when you started it and you, you started gathering that information, I imagine you had an, an, an you know a, a starting point. I get you know the earliest game you thought you would be able to get information from it and work sort of from there. How? Worked, sorry, go on. We worked backwards really. I yeah. started with what I knew, and then added in or you know research what I didn't know. So like seventies and eighties and nineties, whatever. That's quite easy. Although there's still one or two inaccuracies there, uh, or there were. Um, so I put that together and then just started working backwards really and um, you know until I got to um, our first league season and then a bit later I thought well I might as well do the pre-league stuff as well so I researched all of that and added all that in and then I thought well what about the war years so I did the same with the war yeah. years and, all that and so um, yeah it just um, just evolved really just there was no massive planning about it yeah you, you must have a room in your house with just boxes full Things, yeah. <laughs> just well, newspapers. Laugh, what, yeah, what I laughingly call my study, which is um, the box room, which is smaller than the box room, it's, but it's just covered in lever arch files and books and things like that. Well, the good thing now, of course, is so much is available on the internet, um, so it makes it easier to um, to do a lot of the research, especially during something like lockdown, when I can just wade into the British newspaper archive or whatever. Yeah, um, and you said the, the, the books... Um, the book's got a second edition now, where um, it's obviously Everton the complete record. And um, any plans for a third edition? You know, coming up. Well, maybe. Um, I mean, did that evolved. How did that evolve? Um, James Corbett, who I think you've had on. Yeah, we had him on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he he's uh, Decouper Time Publishing. So he um, after the website had gone up, after a while, he uh, got in touch with me and said, explained who he was. They were a new publishing company. Um, and had I ever thought about turning the website into a book? Um, and I said, not really. And he said, well, do you want to do it? So yeah. <laughs> I said, all right. Then. So we went down that line and um, that took, um, that was a lot of work because changing from the website format into the book and then being involved with the designer and the all of the layout and everything else. But that went really well. I can't remember when that was. That was back in 2012, was it? Yeah. Like yeah. And then... Yeah. Um, then we did the second edition, which took us up to 2016. From memory, should know, should know. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think so. yeah, I've got, I've got to go up here. 2016 second edition. Yeah. So, um, so it, it, with a book like that, you can't bring it out annually, obviously, because it's just one extra season on a book like that it doesn't really make it a viable selling proposition. So you need a period of time to go past. I think so. Maybe at some point in the future, we'll, um, we'll look to do something else. Nothing in the pipeline at the moment. But yeah. Um, once you've started on this, it's difficult to stop, I think. Yeah, get Carlo Angelotti's 2020-2021 trophy winning season in there, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and it all starts again. But it just, just on the, when you were talking there about the uh, the way you, you sort of went through data and stuff like that, it, it, mm. it, I got the image in my head of like a cricket scorer. I mean, is that is that something else you do, yeah. that sort of thing? 
Well, yeah, um, I used to run my son's cricket team for a while. Yeah. And the, the most attractive thing for me was the scoring. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, don't, I could go. I could easily fall into an abyss of stats if um, if I don't if I didn't keep it in control. I, I have I have been tempted whilst watching test matches to buy a cricket book and do the scoring. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't Just, done that far. I think a couple of weeks ago they played the Ben Stokes in at Henley, didn't they, on Sky? Yeah. And yeah BBC yeah. BBC provided um, like spreadsheets so you could score along, score the last, score the last day of it. Yeah, and yeah, it's one of them. But, like I, I didn't have a go at it, but I've seen people put their like finalised score sheets up on on social media yeah. afterwards, and it looks so complicated to do <laughs> something like that. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. you've got to do the bowler, the the batsman, yeah. the numbers, the runs, the overs, and all, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's it's hard. And my son played indoor cricket for a while, which is ten times faster. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to that. I felt you know I felt like say, could you just stop for a minute? I need to catch up. <laughs> yeah. on the um, So yeah, it's difficult. I mean, when the match is on. When an Everton match is on, I do try and capture stuff as the match goes on, so I don't have to um, go back afterwards and try and find out yeah. if you get put in the 27th minute or was it the 28th, you know, stuff like that. Um, and that's a lot easier now. With um, it's a lot easier when I'm at home watching the match because I can control sure. it. If it's like, if I'm at the match itself, then I obviously can't do that. I've got to wait until I get home. But do you find that um, easy to detach yourself from sort of being the you know fan who's invested in the game and stuff like that? I suppose the right, I've got to I've got to mark down this shot and mark down this tackle and that sort of thing. It's easier when we're doing rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I can just forget how bad we are and just concentrate on numbers. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, I know what you mean. There is a little bit of that. I've got to try and retain a bit of control and memory over things. But um, yeah, not really. I'm still the fan, and you know. I'm still shouting and giving abuse to people in the stadium. When I get them to... <laughs> one, one thing I did want to ask you about in regards to stats is: are, are you as much are you as into the stats that we're starting to see in the modern game in regards to the way it's evolving? I mean, I, I don't know how thrilly you are with our content, but we have Matt Cheatham on from Sky Sports, who's um, yeah. a statistician, no, um, and he does a lot, lot of great work, a lot of interesting numbers, and and he's always sort of enlightened me about you know XG and. Yeah. Exorcist and passes per phase and defensive actions per minute and all that sort of stuff. I mean, yeah. do, do you have an interest in that side of it as well? Well, I know I know Matt. Yeah, I do get keep in touch every now and again. He asks me questions and stuff, and um, and with all due respect to him, <laughs> I have nothing to do with ex goals and exorcists. I yeah. don't even like assists to be honest with you, because it's, <laughs> it, it, an assist is subjective, isn't it? If someone yeah. steps over a ball and it runs through to the forward and he scores, the guy who stepped over the ball doesn't get the assist, hmm. and that to me that throws everything into um, into doubt. So I don't like that ex goals and all of that. I just don't get it. You know, it's not for me. I just want objective stats. Um, and tangible things, yeah. Yeah, tangible, yeah, that's the right word. Um, so, no, I mean, I, I do keep an eye on it and I do look at it, but I think it's 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 for coaches, it's not for me. Yeah, I think I'm probably the same both. Although Matt, Matt, Matt does great work and it's always interesting listening yeah, to him and that, right, that sort of stuff, but yeah. it's hard. I think the thing about XG for me, which I don't really understand, is it's, it's sort of like it, it seems to take away the, the mentality side. So if you're like a striker and you're going through on goal, like, yeah. is your XG affected by you missed a couple of chances before that or have you scored a couple of goals before that or, or all yeah, these yeah. things? And I'm sure there's answers to them out there somewhere, but, uh, yeah. It's well, it's you know, each it, to your own a little bit. And, I, you know, they've got a big industry behind them doing it. I, I've got me. So, you know, if I wanted to try and keep track of everything like that, I'd have to yeah. duplicate myself somehow. I mean, is, that, is that something you've ever looked to do? Maybe get other people involved in it? Or is it very much a case of, I want something done right, so I'm going to do it myself? No, it's me. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think it's because it started out as as a sort of this weird hobby that I just did, um, and I've developed all my own ways. And if you looked at the what the behind the scenes of the website, you'd be horrified. And web designers would probably want to kill me. Um, <laughs> and all my stats, I know where they are and what they mean. So even if I wanted to get someone else involved, it just wouldn't be possible. It, yeah. It, Take the rest of my life to try and explain it all my own little systems. So um, no, just me. So yeah, I suppose in that sense as well, there's, there's accountability, isn't there, and, and all that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you must take great pride in it. Um, just, just before we um, finish up, then have a chat about. Obviously, there's no footy going on at the moment. There's no 
you know, it's, it's a bit of a drag for us all. But in the main, were you encouraged by what you saw from Everton's, Car- sorry, Carlo Angelotti's Everton? Oh, you got to be, haven't you, really? Just, I mean, even from the Duncan Ferguson um, spell, we, we were up there for the Chelsea game, me and the family, so that was fantastic. And you could feel that seed change in the air. I mean, the hope was that Ancelotti wouldn't just then revert back to 4-2-3-1 and some staid way of playing football. Um, so definitely encouraging signs, absolutely. Um, and he seems to get the club, doesn't he? You know, yeah. that's part and parcel of it. There's that same feel-good factor that there was at the time when Moyes first came in, the People's Club and all of that, and it suddenly everything got a lift. Yeah. Um, it's not just the feeling around the club, but it's also, you know, the performances have been getting better, the individual performances, the change in Dominic Calvert-Lewin, from the way, you know, now, now that someone's finally recognised he needs a striking partner and you can't play him as a wing-back or on the left of the three. Um, it's just it's just very encouraging. And, you know, it's obviously, we're still a work in progress. We're not, you know, we're not um, top six material, I don't think, at the moment. But, you know, who knows? A few more signings, one or two people in the right positions. Um, and it wouldn't it be funny if they did null and void this season and we won the league next season? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not even sure Carlo could pull that one off, to be fair. <laughs> no, I don't think he can. <laughs> That's the eternal hope of a football fan, though, isn't it? Yeah, and I, but it's, 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 it's even speaking about it now, it, it, I think this break's made the whole thing even more surreal that, that he's here still. Mm-hmm. You know, it feels like you forget about it. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're so well versed with, with the history of this football club. I mean, can, can you think of a, a bigger footballing figure that's ever been associated with Everton in regards to what the I suppose you look at people like Alan Ball, maybe, and stuff like that. But in yeah. regards to what people are accomplished in the game as a, a player and a manager, there's no one really that compares to him, is there? I don't think so. I mean, you know, Alan Ball came to us as a World Cup winner, mm. as a player. Um, but, you know, Ancelotti achieved an awful lot as a player, didn't he, as well, yeah. before the management stuff, and to have won the titles that he's won. But, I mean, I think most Everton fans still can't quite believe that he's our manager. Mm. Um, and not just that he's our manager, but he seems to have come in not just you know a payday at the end of a managerial career you know he really seems to be totally involved in the club and wandering around you know Bootle and yeah. town centre and wherever else he keeps popping up he just seems at ease doesn't he with the entire situation yeah, 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 yeah you know, nothing yeah. seems to be flushed to him at all no no he's great so yeah so fingers crossed you know that'll translate into performances and results and we'll start to get trophies again. I can yeah. stop filling the honours board again in the back of my book. Absolutely, yeah. It'd be better if you spent time doing that as opposed to the days that we yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Uh, 20, 20 yeah, odd minutes great. has absolutely flown by there. Um, anyone who's not checked out the website or the book, uh, links to both will be in the description to this on YouTube or on or your podcast as well. Uh, but yeah, Steve, stay safe, mate. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll catch up again soon when Fulty's back up and running. Yeah, we'll both have bigger beards.